Hi, everyone. Uh, back in June, I introduced our project on provider record liveness, uh, on which we're working with uh, Mikel and Leo from Barcelona Supercomputing Center. So this uh, demo today is to present the almost final results uh, of the project. So I'm going to start, um, of course, this is work that has been done um, in, uh, in Probe Lab, which is focusing on protocol benchmarking and optimization. And I'm going to start with uh, a little recap of what I said in June on what is a provider record and um, where does it live. So uh, in order to do that, I'm going to go through the IPFS design on the content uh, life cycle. So what happens from uh, content publication to content uh, request and retrieval. So assume you have a document, you hash it, and what you put on the IPFS, uh, as you all know, is a provider record. Um, the provider record includes the uh, contact details of the publisher as well as the CAD of um, the person publishing the content. So what the DHT does then, it's uh, doing some magic and it's finding a proper node to, um, to store the provider the record. Then uh, on the other side, on the retrieval side, um, the requester would have to uh, know the CID open. They, they're going to go and ask people th through BitSwap, they're immediately connected peers. And if those answers are negative, then they're going to go to the DHT and ask for the same CID, uh, which the, the DHT hopefully will again do its magic and hopefully um, uh, end up in the same node uh, and request for the provider record. So at that point, the uh, requester has got the provider record. So uh, they do have the contact details of the provider, uh, which means that they are going to uh, contact the provider, set up a connection and transfer the data. So um, what is the hypothesis of this work? So as we said, as we've seen, a provider record is a small file that includes uh, the contact details of the content publisher as well uh, as the CAD. And it is published in a number of different uh, nodes in the network. So in the previous example, simplistically that was one node, but <clears throat> in reality is 20. And the replication here is done because we want the, this provider record to be live in the network, to be stored somewhere. So in case some of the nodes go offline or they're overloaded or they cannot respond to the request, this means that um, there are going to be others that have the provider record which are findable, they are online, and they can provide it to uh, whoever requests the content. If there is no provider record in the network, uh, if all of the nodes have gone offline, then uh, this means that the content is unreachable, which is pretty bad. So the hypothesis for this work is that because we've seen uh, high rates of churn in the IPFS network, which would reach up to 70% of peers have left the network within um, after only two hours uh, uh, after joining the network. This means that um, you know uh, a lot of peers, a lot of those 20 peers have got good chances of having left the network, which leaves a few replicas of the provider record to the uh, inside the network. So we wanted to see whether um, there are cases in the IPFS DHT where um, provider records basically uh, are not live anymore and therefore content is unreachable. So what we did is that um, uh, Mikhail uh, built uh, what is called the CAD holder. Uh, you can find the, uh, this uh, URL down there on GitHub, which basically is a tool um, that produces content, produces CADs, produces the provider records of those CADs, it stores them on the APFS DHT, and then monitors those specific nodes to see if they're still online, if they're providing the, um, the provider record, if they're serving the provider record or not. So um, th there are several features. I'm not going to go into the details there, but that's the main functionality. And we tested that over uh, the live network, and we wanted to answer some questions. So um, the, one of the main questions is, uh, as I said before, does the record stay live until the republish time? So provider records are republished every 12 hours to make sure that um, they're alive in the network. And despite network churn, uh, we're still going to find the next you know, 20 peers 
that are online at this point in time in order to uh, replicate the record? The answer to the question is yes. And we see uh, in this graph where we have on the um, uh, on the y-axis, we have uh, the number of nodes where PRs are available. And on the x-axis, we have the time since the CID, the, provide, the CID has been published or the record has been stored elsewhere. So um, it goes from zero to 38. So the provider record would be republished at this point at 12, um, uh, after 12 hours. But despite that, obviously the CID holder uh, does not republish records. So that's the whole point. Uh, so uh, we see that the record stays live to uh, approximately 15 nodes for more than 35 hours, uh, which is a good thing, means that the current DHT um, keeps records uh, live. So no content, no content is unreachable. Now, the next question that comes uh, to mind is um, if records stay live due to hydras, um, and um, yeah, we, we excluded hydras from um, the requests that we've been uh, trying to, to make in order to get the provider record. And we found out that excluding hydras, uh, we still have uh, on average about 20, uh, sorry, about 12 nodes that keep the record alive for more than uh, 35 for more than 35 hours. Uh, again, great news because it means we are not uh, really uh, affected or not not affected, but we're not really dependent on hydras. So what does this mean practically? Um, it means that uh, perhaps we can reduce the value of K from 20, which is the current replication factor to 15. And we've done experiments um, on this as well. So we reduced the replication factor, we published CID, CIDs, we published provider records, and we monitored again uh, for how long do uh, peers stay online uh, and keep the provider record live. Again, we see that, uh, of course, there is uh, a little drop uh, down from uh, 12, uh, sorry, down from uh, on average 15 to an average of 10, which again stay live for more than 35 hours, um, which is uh, again great news. It means we can uh, apply some optimization to the IPFS uh, DHT as it is today. What else does this mean practically? As I said, we uh, are the, the republish interval on the IPFS DHT is 12 hours. So um, perhaps we could consider increasing the republish interval. Uh, and we found out that we can at least double it because we've seen that everything stays live for at least 35 hours. So um, you know, even more than double that, than double the uh, 12 hours, uh, would still be okay in the extensive set of experiments that we've run. Um, so, um, but what do we need? There is something that we need to be careful of at, at this point. So when we publish a CAD, we're trying to find the 20, the K closest peers um, to the CAD uh, in actual distance in the Kadimlia DHT. So we need to make sure, uh, you know, if peers come and go, if those peers that we have chosen in the beginning of um, at publication time are still the closest peers after 12 or 24 or you know uh, whatever amount of time we're going to choose for the republishing interval. And um, again, we find out that 15 out of the 20 closest peers uh, chosen initially are still among the closest ones after more than 35 hours. So uh, we see this that um, we see here that initially it's around 17. Uh, it drops down to 16 and then stays stable at 15 nodes. Uh, so this means that 15 nodes actually keep the provider record live up until uh, 32 hours, at which point it goes down to 14. Um, now, the uh, question here is, does this include the hydras? It does include the hydras, but again, if we exclude the hydras, we're going to see a drop of uh, two to three nodes from that. So it would go from an average of 15 to an average of 12, and would stay like that for more than 30 hours. So uh, the conclusions of the study, um, uh, there is a final recommendation that will be coming soon. Um, we found out that definitely there is significant space for improvement, uh, and this uh, builds on the case that um, uh, DHT servers and uh, DHT, uh, uh, sorry, content providers 
uh, are actually overloaded. Um, they, they have to run um, high CPU machines, they have to uh, consume lots of bandwidth and so on. It has been a long-standing uh, issue in the IPFS um, network. So uh, this means that if we can reduce the overhead, then this will have uh, quite a significant impact. Now, roughly, uh, if we go from K20 uh, to K equal 15, we roughly have 25% reduction in overhead. And if we republish, uh, if we increase the republish interval from 12 to 24 hours, uh, obviously you understand that, that this uh, has got about 100% reduction in overhead. Um, of course, it has to be noted but but that by overhead here doesn't mean the entire overhead of the um, of those machines. It's just everything that is provider record related. So uh, sending provider records, receiving provider records, storing provider records, and so on. Um, yeah, we're not aware what percentage of the overall uh, energy consumption of the uh, of the servers this is, but. Um, Definitely, this is going to be worthwhile reduction. Uh, we've been working on this uh, with the team. As I said, uh, we've got more grants on radius. We have the, the final report, which is very extensive, several, several pages with like many tens of more uh, figures and results than what I presented here. You can find it in the uh, uh, GitHub slash protocol slash uh, network dash measurements. Uh, it's pull request 16. Uh, it's soon to be merged, but if you're eager to find out more now, uh, head there. That's it, thank you. Uh, you can get in touch. We live in uh, ProBlab on IPFS Discord and also on Falcon Slack. Thanks everyone, cheers.